Okay, I think we, we can start. So, good. Today, uh, I'm not talking about carbonara. <laughs> yeah, this is a different kind of recipe. <laughs> okay, ma, let, let me do some presentation. My name is Federico. I'm Italian. I live in the UK. I work for TransferWise, which is a fintech. We, uh, we do uh, money uh, exchange. Very convenient. We recently launched a um, uh, debit card for paying in local currency, and it's quite useful. So we we do any sort of stuff. This this project, this specific project, is uh, related in some way with TransferWise because uh, he, uh, my my work triggered the need to replicate from MySQL to Postgres because we have a lot of MySQL database. <laughs> I'm pushing slowly to move into a decent database. <laughs> Let's put in this, <laughs> uh, in, in this sense. And this is the story of the project, which started like a joke, literally, and has become something quite useful. So let's start with some presentations. I was born in 1972. I look younger, but I'm turning 46 this October. Uh, passionate about IT in 1982, uh, so uh, mostly because of the Tron movie. That was amazing. And yeah, uh, I, I really love Tron. <laughs> and I joined the Oracle DBA Secret Society in 2004. I am my fire mark in some place. I've been fire market. Uh, but after a couple of years, I fell in love with Postgres, and I'm still in love with Postgres. I think it's amazing. And at that time, it was, the, it was around the 7.4, not exactly the good one. But I said, wow, that's amazing. And I am Devrin Gundut's PostgreSQL tattoo copycat. I have this lovely Slonic tattoo on my, <laughs> on my shoulder. And yes, I, as I said, I work in TransferWise as a data engineer, which is a quite strange job. I'm, I, I, I think about myself more like a DBA, but data engineering covers more, uh, most, most things I do, so it's more, uh, more extended as a as thing. So let me start with a disclaimer. I'm not a developer, I'm a DBA. So it means being hated by everybody and dating everybody. So let's put things in the right perspective because I use tabs. So let the eight flow through you, I know. Uh, but I try to use spaces. I just can't do it. <laughs> I try. I almost flown this, this laptop out of my window when I try to switch the spaces. So sorry. Everything I do is in tabs. So let's start with the table of contents. Uh, I will start with some history. Uh, I will explain how my SQL work. How many people work with my SQL? Okay. Almost, okay, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, the uh, description of the project, the replicate in action, I will try to do a demo, which fa we will, it will fail absolutely, it will, it will fail for sure. The demos always fail at the presentations. Demos are four. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> De demos are four, yes. Yeah. And lesson learned, wrap up the new uh, challenges I'm facing, and, uh, and so on. So let's start with some history. So, I started thinking about migrating from MySQL to Postgres almost immediately, 2006. I started writing these, uh, this, crazy, uh, this crazy thing, the, uh, uh, he called Neo My to PG, he was the uh, Neo My to Postgres. There was, a, there was at that time a, a script, I think it was in Perl or something like this, which worked over the, uh, the database uh, dump and converted from MySQL dialect to Postgres dialect. So, but I, I thought it would be much better if I, I would be able to flow through MySQL and push directly into Postgres. So I decided to do this thing. And I had these cases, this, 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 this specific case to uh, migrate things. Uh, uh, PHPBB, who knows what is PHPBB? Good for you. <laughs> it's, a, it's an horrible software because the migration was successful, it worked, but the, uh, database, the, the machine died as soon as we switched to Postgres because PHPBB opens a new connection per each query inside the page, at least at that time. I hope they improved it in some way. 
but it's very MySQL specific. MySQL doesn't fork, and I didn't think about uh, optimizing resources. Obviously, putting PG Bouncer in the middle, it worked in some way. But the machine it started generating zombie processes, so not good. The script is written in Python 2.6, is a monolith script, is slow because I do insert at any time, and is a good checklist for things to avoid when coding. So if you want to, a reference for, uh, for your coding style, what not to do, have a look at this repository. It's absolutely crap. <laughs> but uh, I learned from my failures. So in uh, 2013, I, I started with the idea of moving with something better than the, uh, the old script. So I started working with this thing, using SQL Alchemy for pulling out the MySQL metadata, and it remained in a proof of concept only. At that time, I decided the name, PG Chameleon, partly inspired by the, mu the, the, the song from the, the Culture Club song, Karma Chameleon. And the other idea was, oh, maybe with SQL Alchemy, I can build up something completely agnostic so it can move from one engine to another engine, very pretentious. <laughs> so, but it was built during the years of the life on the roller coaster. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it was a presentation I did at the PG Conf EU in Tallinn in 2017. And uh, 2016, 2016. But there's the recording available. Uh, you just point to the PG Brighton UK because it's the uh, the Postgres user group in Brighton at the moment is on old. But we have a very lot, uh, a lot of nice presentation. And this is a quite funny uh, description of my life in my previous job. So it was literally a roller coaster, any sort of crazy thing. So I, I had to discharge frustration, and I said, Oh wow, let's go for writing some code, but abandoned after a while. SQL Alchemy limitations were massively frustrating. C slide 3, I'm a DBA, not a developer, and I really don't understand how people can access the relation in that crazy way. And PG Loader, PG Loader did a fantastic job. It does a fantastic job for loading from MySQL to Postgres, so why reinvent the wheel? So I abandoned that thing. And I used PG Loader for my first migration in TransferWise from MySQL to Postgres, but I faced a different problem. That was simple. It worked fantastically, and people are still happy for the move. But uh, we had a specific uh, requirement. Uh, when I joined TransferWise, if you look to this um, uh, uh, link, uh, tech transfer wise, this is a, I wrote this, the history of the migration, scaling out our that analytics database. Uh, basically, this database was initially a MySQL, which is our legacy database, replicated into another MySQL, and against this database there was a looker, there is still a looker, uh, which is not exactly good for the quality of SQL generated. And so this database is started lagging, bloating, there was also the problem for uh, wrong uh, protocol uh, configured, so it was massively inconsistent. People just could not use, and because it was for the business intelligence, people could not plan for, for the business intelligence. So we discussed about the different uh, solutions, and the only only. I, I, I succeeded to say, oh wow, let's go for Postgres. And the results were very nice, so people were happy. But there was just one little catch. People wanted real-time data from MySQL to Postgres. So I discovered this um, by accident, this Python MySQL replication, which can read the MySQL protocol. And I said, oh, well, let's try to build a proof of concept and see if it works. And it works. <laughs> it, it can read the, uh, the database changes directly from MySQL, even in a cascading replica. And later, I evolved this thing in PG Chameleon 1.x. Uh, so give your kudos to the Python MySQL replication team. They are doing an amazing job. Uh, this is the GitHub uh, repository. They uh, massive work. They, they did a fantastic job. So. PG Chameleon 1.x, uh, developed on the London to Brighton commute. I am the most productive in writing code on train, airplane, something that excludes me from the environment. And uh, I did uh, 
on, on, the fly in, on the inbound fly to Canada, I did uh, an, ex an extension to this, this tool. So uh, it, will, it will hit the next release very, very soon. So uh, probably in the, in the fly back, I will do something else. <laughs> so uh, release the stable the 7th of May 2017, followed by eight bug releases, bug fix releases, compatible with CPython 2.7, 3.3, .3 and plus. It's C Python because I'm using PsychoPG for the Postgres connector, so uh, it cannot be used in other different implementations. Uh, no more SQL Alchemy. Replace the, the old driver MySQL DB to PyY MySQL, which is a pure driver, and this is the one used by the uh, replication library, so there was no point in using two different libraries, two different drivers for MySQL. And there's a command line helper, can support the override, or the, the type override on the fly, very dangerous because you can break down everything. Uh, installs in virtual M system wide PI, uh, via PyPy, there's just PIP install PG Chameleon. Can detach the replica for minimal downtime migration. On my blog, uh, pgdba.org, there's a interest. I, I wrote a tutorial how to migrate MySQL to Postgres with minimal downtime using this thing. Uh, the limitations. Uh, all the affected tables are locked in read-only mode during the eating replica process. This thing locks everything. Not nice. Uh, the data is not accessible. The version 1 drops the, the destination schema and reload everything. So if you have to refresh the data for some reasons, people will be incredibly unhappy. Tables require primary key. There's no demonization. My mistake. I first said, oh, let's build up something. And then when I say, oh, I need to add the demonization, and nothing worked. So <laughs> uh, always stays in, in foreground. Single schema replica, one process per each schema, highly inefficient in terms of uh, network, uh, no concurrency between read and write, and re read and replay. Not a good thing. It was a nice proof of concept, something that works, but I needed something better, and this is the uh, the version two. But before doing that, I want to explain a little. Uh, I want to little explain how my SQL replica works. So it's logical. I'm sorry to say so, but it's much more advanced than the PG logical, the the logical decoding in Postgres. But they started from the very beginning with the logical replica. So they evolved into uh, a, a more sophisticated way. So Postgres is just adding at the moment. I really feel the lack of DDL in Postgres is uh, something, but uh, it, ca it can be worked around in some way. Uh, the replica, when it's enabled, the logs, uh, the, the, the change of rows or the statements or whatever are stored in base64 inside binary logs. Uh, the slave gets the binary log files, then it stores locally, and then this data is replayed against the slave. It's similar to, as a concept, uh, to a, a streaming replication. So, so the master generates the logs, the logs are streamed, stored in the slave, and replayed against the, the slave. And MySQL supports three types of different uh, raw images, called in this way. The oldest implementation statement, so emits literally statements, insert, delete, update, blah, blah, blah. Then we have the raw, which is the raw image, field, data, field, data, along with the schema and the table name. And then we have the mixed, which is usually the best, but you have to trust the uh, uh, safety of the function you are using in MySQL, because it's the MySQL which de decides which strategy has to use, statement normally, or row when the function you are using is unsafe. To be honest, much better row. <laughs> And for working, this thing requires the raw format because I need to capture the, the, the image and transform it in something else. So let's put the chameleon in the middle. And this thing, what does it do? Performs the initial load from replicated tables, connects to the streaming replica protocol, the MySQL replica protocol, stores the row into a Postgres table, not just one. I'm working with two log tables, one per each specific MySQL source, and the PLPG SQL function decodes the row and replays the changes and manages the errors at the same time. 
uh, it can detach the replica for minimal downtime migration. What, what does it mean? Basically, when, you, when the initialization happens, this thing it doesn't set the sequences yet, attach the sequences for serial, but it doesn't care about the sequence progression because it relies on the information coming from MySQL. And it doesn't create any uh, foreign key. But when you detach the replica, this thing resets the sequences for working and also creates the foreign keys reading from MySQL. So this is the, the schema, basically. So we are still have the, the MySQL thing. Uh, PG Chameleon reads the rows, stories into JSON B in Postgres, and then the replay in a different process works out on Postgres. So improvements compared to the version one. Oh, I developed this thing most of the time at the PG Conf U. Uh, uh, most of the concept, most of the, uh, the demonization was developed during, in a couple of days, and then all the rest on the commute from Brighton to London. So I, I released it as stable the 1st of January. It's compatible just with Python 3.3. I decided to drop the 2.7. Is, is the past, is legacy. I know, uh, as it's so refreshing, do not care anymore at the, of the 2.7. But it doesn't make any sense. We, uh, we need to move into in the version 3, so uh, I think it, uh, it has sense. Installs the same way, virtual and M- M- system-wide. Replicates, this thing replicates multiple schema from a single MySQL into a target Postgres database. So I can just set up different schema mappings, because in MySQL the database is a schema, actually. So uh, it's possible to transform this information. It's also possible to change things once they are consolidated. So if I need to change the, uh, the destination schema name, I just change the configuration, tell the application to rename the schema and reset the information in the replica catalog, and this thing it will do automatically. Uh, uh, conservative approach to the replica. Uh, before, when one single error at replay time and the entire replica were broken, at this time, the PLPG SQL function just captured the error, generated the, uh, the, log on the, uh, the, uh, the error on the log, sends eventually an information, the information to rollbar, because this thing also supports rollbar for uh, sending messages, and excludes the table from the replica and says, okay, this table is no longer replicated, but everything else is fine. So we can resynchronize this table later. One of the improvements I think I will add is the self-filling thing. So when the table errors, the system will pause for a while, reload the data, and restart from scratch. But I'm still getting there. Uh, demonized, one process, two, uh, which is the watchdog, two process, one for read, one for write, using the sub-process not threaded. So uh, is more robust. I can capture into the queue, the Python queue, the, uh, the errors, and get decent debugging in case of problems. Also, I approached this thing during the initialization. There was no real need for locking everything and relying on one single a pair of coordinates, because uh, I can just lock the single table before starting the copy at the initialization, get the coordinates, store along the table eh, at replay, ignore the events until the information, until the, uh, the replication point reaches the consistent state. So uh, when you init the replica, the destination database is not consistent, but it reaches the consistency over time. It's a, uh, similar to the concept of the, uh, the standby in Postgres. Uh, the difference is you can still connect to the database and get garbage <laughs> until you get the consistent data. But uh, it's, a, uh, it's, it's quite nice. People are, uh, are very happy with this approach. Uh, even because uh, even if you connect to the master, uh, the locking time it can be quite slow unless you have large tables. There's a rollbar integration, I, mo- uh, I mentioned it before. Rollbar is a service that receives messages and you can capture the, uh, the errors and send it to something else. Uh, email, Victor Ops, whatever. It's very useful. Uh, I've added also an experiment support for Postgres source, uh, but it's just the init replica, so you can just reload data. Uh, on a regular basis. There's no real uh, replication uh, uh, 
I, I have in my to-do list this thing. Uh, there's also the tables in the old schema are still kept. There's a separate schema where the table are loaded, and then when the init replica is finished, the, table, the, the schemas are swapped and the data becomes available immediately. So uh, when you need to refresh the schema, uh, nobody will lose the data access. It will stay static, but the data will still there uh, accessible. Uh, and DDL are translated, even the other, the other version did it, uh, are translated in the Postgres dialect, so this thing keeps the in sync the schema. So if you add a new table in MySQL, you will get automatically in Postgres. Add new fields, you will get automatically in Postgres. Uh, in general, it works very, very nice. Uh, I'm still getting some errors, but uh, now is uh, much, much better. Uh, still some replication, unfortunately, primary key or unique keys for the table to be replicated. If there's no a unique constraint, a unique identifier, the table is initialized, but is not replicated. So you can just load, do the initial load for this table. Uh, the foreign keys are always created on the lead update restrict. I never had time to experiment how to pull out the information from MySQL. Uh, when you detach the replica. So uh, there's no uh, specific configuration for, uh, for the events. And yes, the Postgres uh, source type supports only the init replica process. So, replica initialization. How does it work? From the MySQL manual. Flush the table with red lock, so locks everything, get the master coordinates, binary log name and binary log position in bytes, copy the data, release the locks. But, as I said, this thing, PG Chameleon, flushes the tables with uh, red lock one by one. The lock is held only during the copy, and the system gains consistency over time after the init replica. Uh, fallback on failure, this is something I, I, I learned from PG Bouncer, <laughs> for, for PG, from PG Loader. Uh, the, uh, the copy is made in slice using the CSV format. Uh, but obviously, if you get some rubbish in MySQL, copy will fail and you will lose the entire batch data. So this thing saves the information for retrieving again this data and then try to insert one by one the rows. And if it fails, try also to uh, clean up the row from some rubbish data. Uh, most of the problems are caused by the null markers in text which are allowed in MySQL and in Postgres, no. So uh, this thing happens also during the replica. So if there's some rubbish, uh, the system tries first to clean up the row before giving up. So it tries as much as possible to rely on uh, less stringent source type. Uh, so let's see how to configure it. So uh, first thing, set up the configuration on your MySQL. Bin log format row the name of the bin log, which is normally uh, MySQL bin, the server ID, this, is, uh, yeah, this has to be unique across the, uh, the MySQL replication cluster. So uh, normally the master gets the number one and then all the rest follow. Uh, so if you are working with the master, just set number one. Bin log at raw image, this is very important. From the version 5.6 of, My, of MySQL, this is true because this is uh, an improvement. They support different type of raw images. If you're working with um, 5.5, this uh, parameter is not important, it's not supported. Uh, but it means always log everything. If, even if you change one single field, log the entire raw image, so you can be captured and manage it. Uh, set up the uh, MySQL user, so create the user, create the password, very difficult password. Uh, grant all on Sakila, I'm using the Sakila database. Uh, it can be downloaded here. It's a quite general purpose, it comes with a lot of diff different data types. And it needs few grants, so it needs the grant over the Sakila schema. Uh, normally I give the grant all if I need to, uh, to do, I think it's not really needed, probably it's just the select, but just in case you get some permission error, the grant all is, uh, is in any case, you can fix that thing. Uh, grant reload because you need to uh, capture the master coordinates, replication client and replication slave for reading the, uh, the data stream, and then flush privileges for changing the, for applying for your session. It's just a 
uh, an extra measure. For Postgres, it's much simpler. Create user replica with password replica. Create a database owning the user replica. That's it. And then install uh, PG Chameleon. So create a virtual env. Or if you want to, if you have a root, you can do it in your uh, system wide. Uh, PIP install. Uh, upgrade just in case something goes wrong. Install PG Chameleon, then run this thing. Chameleon set configuration file which creates a dot PG Chameleon directory in your own directory with the configuration files and some other uh, directories. And then copy the configuration example into default YAML, which is the default configuration. So you can omit the configuration file. But you can get multiple configuration files if you want. One per each destination database. So you can have multiple destination Postgres and the configuration file set up, uh, can, can set up multiple uh, MySQL sources. Then we set up the configuration. So within the configuration file default uh, YAML, we have the Postgres connection. Unfortunately, the password isn't clear. I'm working to encrypt that thing. I know it's not nice. Uh, but the, uh, the directory is set to, uh, to be read just for the user, which is running the process. So I'm following the, uh, the same concept of the PG pass. So, uh, when the directory, the, uh, the dot directory is created, is not uh, accessible by anything else. So at least this, this minimal protection. And uh, set up the password, set up the database, the destination database, and the char set. Uh, uh, we can set up the rollbar configuration. Rollbar requires a rollbar API key and the uh, rollbar environment. I've set up uh, for, for the demo, for the attempted demo, the, um, uh, the, the, this, this environment. Uh, the type override, uh, it can be empty or it can be just the exact type with the override to and the list of tables in the form of uh, schema.table. So you can uh, restrict the type override per table. And uh, then we set up the sources. So MySQL, similar concept. We have the uh, host, user, password, but no database because we manage this thing in this other key, schema mapping. So Sakila is mapped against the Loxodonta Africana or whatever you want. <laughs> and then we have another bunch of configuration. We can limit the tables to replicate. So we, if we need three tables from MySQL, we can just set up this thing into the limit tables, and the system will replicate just three tables. Uh, if we need to exclude some tables from the replica because they are not useful for our destination database, we can do it in the reverse using skip tables. Uh, we can also set up the grant select to a specific user or role for accessing this replicated schema. So the system automatically grant the usage on the schema and set up the default privileges for being accessible for the user specified in this way. If a user specified is missing, just throw a warning, a go forward, no, no error is thrown. And so why the default privileges? Because when new tables come in, automatically we'll get the, uh, the privilege for that user. Uh, lock timeout, this is useful when you are resynchronizing or swapping things. You can say after 120 uh, seconds or whatever, just give up, throw an error, and uh, leave the replica working, but with the old schema swapped still in place, so you have to drop manually or address this thing. Uh, server ID, same concept of the other one. Uh, normally, I use the DNS uh, naming, so year, uh, month, day, and serial, similar to the serial in, in DNA, DNS configuration. And replica batch size and replica max row, uh, replay, sorry, replica batch size and replay max row are too fine tuning for telling the database how much data it has to be pulled from MySQL before writing in Postgres and continuing, and how much rows has to be replayed against the Postgres database. So uh, you can fine tune the, uh, the performance of this thing. 
uh, batch retention, how much history of the existing batches, the processed batches, do you want to keep? In general, one day is more than sufficient. Uh, copy max memory, this is the size of the slice when it's pulled in the initial copy, so it, it keeps the uh, automatically and dynamically generated from the MySQL uh, row size and table size extracted from the information schema. And the copy mode, it can be in file or in memory. In general, in file, it works very nice. In memory, there's still the risk of the uh, out-of-memory killer to kill out everything. Uh, slip loop, this is the, uh, the amount of seconds that waits after there's no events in, uh, in the MySQL bin log. So every one second, try to reconnect and pull out data. For low activity databases, this also can be tuned. Uh, probably I will change it because I'm adding the support for the Airbit. Uh, and those two are quite useful. On error replay, continue, so pull out the table from the replica and continue, or crash if you want to debug. And on error read, continue. This is quite useful if you are pulling out data out of RDS. This, uh, this has been a specific ticket on the, on, my Git, uh, on the GitHub project. A guy is replicating MySQL RDS to Postgres or uh, Google Cloud, Google SQL. So uh, RDS had this problem. When, during the maintenance, disconnect the connections from MySQL and the system crashed. So this thing, if there's a co connection issue on read, wait, 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 and when the database is back, MySQL is back, reconnects and start streaming again. So is uh, is useful for uh, flaky connections. Out of maintenance, one day, this is just a normal vacuum over the log tables that unfortunately can bloat in some way, and type MySQL, in this case MySQL or Postgres, depending on which one is the, uh, the configuration, the, uh, the source type, but just ignore Postgres at the moment. There's no uh, source type Postgres. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm still getting there. Uh, so uh, how to set up things? So run uh, Chameleon create replica schema. Uh, adding the debug flag it will output on console, very verbose, quite useful and informative. Otherwise, it will, uh, it will stay on log, the, the, uh, the output. Uh, then we add the specific source, configuration default, the default.yaml without the yaml extension. Source type is the key we have seen there. This is the source name, and we are using the source type MySQL. So we add the source, and then we call the init replica, which will, reload, will load the data for the initial load and start in the replica. Then we are ready for start the replica process, configuration default, source MySQL, and this, without the debug, goes in background, spawns the processes, and then you can output the show status using the configuration and source, which gives you a nice read lag, last replay, the schema mapping, and blah, 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 how many replay draws, how many replay DDL. These values are calculated over the batch retention. So if you have a one day of history, you will get one day of history here for your statistics. So, uh, but it's a, it's a nice way. Oh, if there's any uh, not replicated table, will appear down there. But it's time for the demo. So let, let's, let's explore the failure. So, <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, I already set up everything. So um, I have my, uh, my MySQL here, so uh, the show status, uh, let, me, let me try to uh, maximize this thing. So in show, show status, this is the, uh, the show status output. So you can see I have a source name type MySQL, the status is stopped, consistent is also calculated if it's consistent or not. And the read lag, 49 minutes. I started 49 minutes before the uh, uh, ago, so just to test everything was fine. And this is the information, the Sakila table not replicated. And this was one table which failed, and we will see how this table fails. So let's do uh, a simple thing. So uh, I will run an init replica. 
and the init replica outputs all these sorts of information. So let's move uh, a little up. So when I run the init replica, this thing, uh, it starts with uh, copying source tables into a temporary schema. And then this thing, for each table, so if you look there, uh, where is it? Uh, it builds up the indices table per table. So first load the data and then builds up the indices to speed up uh, the entire operation. Uh, when everything is finished, uh, the, oh yes, this is, this is interesting. This is a, a table with rubbish data inside. Uh, basically, we have a table, test error, uh, in Postgres copy, serving slice number, and then it gives up copy slice, well, executing inserts per slice one, row per slice, that value, and the error is outputted, output syntax boolean four, it tries to clean up the row, but it says, oh, I cannot do it, so give up the row, but the table is replicated in any case. So it just discards the problematic row during the init replica. So let's start the replica, and during the replica process, this, I, I put a, slope, uh, a slip loop at five seconds. So every five seconds, the system pulls the, uh, pulls the, uh, the MySQL and tries to, to connect. So what we have here, the rotate event, this, those are the coordinates, log name and position, and it's not progressing. So the ID batch, this is the, the batch I'm using for grouping the, the reads, is not progressing as well. So it's just waiting for new uh, events. Uh, so in the MySQL, I will run uh, where is it? Ah, that's it. So in MySQL, I will run uh, this script. One is the create table, which drop table first, then the insert, adding data, altering tables or adding more columns, uh, insert with boolean, and break the replica. So I will show you most of the, uh, the things it can work. So let's start with the uh, create table. So I'm pushing this script in uh, MySQL. And after a while, oh, that's it. Already got drop table exist. And let me stop a second. Otherwise, it will go to I. And that's it. So we have oh, maximize that. So we have uh, capture a query, create table, blah, blah, blah. This is the tokenization of the entire thing. So this, this, this statement is transformed into a Python dictionary. And this thing generates the DDL into the Postgres dialect. It also adds the uh, other, um, if, for example, we have an enumeration, this thing also first creates the enumeration type and then adds the data type correctly to the table. I will show in a second. So uh, if I start again the replica on this side, so. And this is the table which I created, Sakila test with the, this data. Uh, on MySQL is, <coughs> sorry, is uh, exactly the same uh, uh, configuration. Uh, sorry, uh, it's an old one. Ma de desk, desk, desk. This is. So we have ID, outer incremental, ID, big integer, uh, not null, default, so serial, varchar. 45, timestamp, and the two indices, well, there, there are two indices here, uh, it's flaky to display in MySQL, and I don't remember the command, <laughs> and the, uh, the indices are created this way. So the next step is, uh, let, me, let me go slightly faster. So let's do the insert. And, and that's it. The data is inserted on uh, 
MySQL on, on Postgres, and then number three, alter table. You will see the alter table coming in a second on the other side, tokenized, and on uh, uh, this box you will see soon, in a few seconds, yeah, new enumeration appeared here, and new fields will appear as soon as they are replayed, Boolean default, status, and now there is a, uh, yeah, that's it, it's finished. So Boolean default, because I set up the type override, has been uh, uh, automatically casted on Postgres from tinyint uh, to uh, default zero Boolean with the default value, so it's a Boolean. So now let's try to break the replica. So, I will, I will just insert number four in uh, the MySQL table, which is perfectly legit, but, but Postgres will fail. And that's it. So, the error has been captured. There was an error, and the table, invalid input syntax for type boolean four, affected table are no longer replicated. So, at this point, if I display the show status, I will see the DB Sakila test is no longer replicated. But uh, I can just call the sync table with the table disabled, and the system will reload that single disabled table and will reattach to the replica. This is a manual process. I will make uh, automatic soon. So, oh, yes, just one thing is uh, this is the roll bar dashboard. All the error, all the messages are being logged there. And this is the error with the nice debugging message output directly to your roll bar or your Victor Ops or whatever. And so let's move back to the last part of the presentation. I will try to do as fast as possible. Slightly. So, uh, lesson learned, uh, DDL, real pain in the back. I tried to use an, uh, a specific library, didn't work very well, and I used the regular expressions. So I have two problems now. <laughs> and I wasn't expert, I didn't know anything, now I know quite good regular expressions. So it, it was a nice, interesting uh, uh, experiment. So, new goals. Uh, version two, resync automatically the tables on error replay. Improve the replay speed, which is still not very good. GTID support, this is the one thing I did on the fly, inbound fly, but I discovered MariaDB uses a different GTID format. I wanna die, but so I need to work around the problem. And medium term goals for the version 2.1, parallel copy and in the creation, this initialization is still one single process. Uh, logical replica from Postgres, I have no idea. I would like to take the occasion to learn how Postgres works internally, so maybe I will build up a, uh, a specific library for logical decoding, but I'm very tempted by Walt to Jason, <laughs> to be honest. It's so nice, so probably I will use that. And in pro Improve the default column handling at the moment is not exactly good. Uh, everything is created as null when it's uh, replayed in, uh, in Postgres. Uh, this guy, there are some stickers and pins on the, on the desk there. Please help yourself. This guy is called Igor, is the mascot of my PG Chameleon, and has been developed by this lovely lady, Elena Thomas. She made a fantastic job, very, very lovely. He's a chameleon with Postgres t-shirt and the Python scarf. And please report any problem, blame, uh, issues on GitHub or, and follow uh, Twitter for the uh, release announcements. And one last thing, in TransferWorks we are hiring, so please have a look to the, uh, our job page if you are interested. And that's all, folks. Thank you for listening. Any questions?